The following is a presentation of TFNN. The P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome all to another exciting edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your humble, lovable, and squeezably soft host. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. Well, we got a little bit of follow through from yesterday. NASDAQ's up 50, uh, S&P's up 13, uh, Dow's off 60. Yeah, and some change. Again, uh, Boeing weighing on it. Uh, we'll talk about Boeing in a minute. We have a double top secret guest at the bottom of the hour. And uh, we'll talk about uh, that in the second segment. Just uh, That's what they call in the industry a teaser. A teaser. You all know I don't have many guests on there. But uh, this one will be rather special. Has been on the show maybe five or six years ago. So uh, I think you will enjoy it. Uh, anything else going on besides uh, very light volumes in the market? Well, we're starting the show with two hours left to go in the trading day. We do not have 4 billion shares. We do not have 3.9 billion shares. We barely have 3.8 billion shares. Not surprising, uh, again, not a lot of volume on the downside, not a lot of volume on the upside. What we need is one pullback with kind of light volume to some kind of uh, of uh, pullback level. And I think whatever's got the market in this funk of not going higher and not going lower uh, will probably resolve itself. Uh, in the meantime, uh, we'll take a look and see what the charts are telling us and divining. Uh, we'll also talk about uh, eh, mass hysteria. At least I think it's a little mass hysteria. Uh, and uh, how uh, the stock market generally shoots first and asks questions later. And uh, sometimes that gives you a big opportunity. Anyway, we'll uh, talk about this and a ton more in the rest of the show. Right now, we're going to do a little history, and then we'll get into uh, some charts. And, uh, yeah. I think we're going to have a good show. Then it's all just a little bit of history repeating. And on this day in 2008, video streaming service Hulu is launched to the public. Hulu has since become a focal point for ongoing development of the streaming TV service, along with the uh, agonizing TV networks and movie studios. Uh, it's also revealed Alec Baldwin to be an alien when the ads first came out. Hulu took a big hit because uh, as the spokesman, he was uh, rather embarrassed to have his daughter put the answering machine message on for him. And uh, eh, I guess he's still around, but uh, reputation never was what it was before then. I think it's kind of... Uh, like you, when you get real drunk and start uh, uh, yelling at the Jews uh, in Hollywood or uh, calling your uh, daughter a little piggy uh, on the answering machine, eh, you just don't get those character points back uh, after so much. It's always kind of a little bit that kind of always sticks on you. Uh, anyway, on this day in 2008, an alternative to Netflix, which continues to do well, but never has really seen the push uh, that Netflix, but certainly a competitor uh, to the rest. So, uh, well, we've got that. Why don't we uh, just get into what I wanted to talk about to begin with before we get into some charts in the second segment, and that is Boeing. Um, one of the things my dad did besides uh, th uh, fly U-2s through nuclear uh, explosions in the uh, late 50s and, and 60s uh, and uh, run around with all the uh, CIA spooks or at least fly them around. 
uh, was uh, an accident investigator uh, for uh, the Air Force. And so when a plane would crash, he'd get called out there. Uh, we actually had one very close to where we lived. Uh, and uh, I don't think he was the head of it, but I think he was uh, like second in charge. Since it was local, he, I guess it wasn't that he didn't drag me, but I certainly went and, and saw the aftermath of the planes that had crashed. I uh, thought it was very interesting, but ended up, uh, I think it was like early May or something. I must have been 12, maybe. I think I was maybe 12, maybe 13. Uh, and actually got to see the process, at least the way the FBI, or the uh, Air Force did it. It was very interesting, uh, all the things that they went back in and all the things that they tested and the theories. And the uh, biggest thing was they didn't jump to a conclusion. The airplane crashed, something was wrong, but uh, I learned then it wasn't just one thing, but it's generally three or four or five or six things uh, that now cause a big problem. Uh, all of those six things have to happen most of the time in a very certain order for the outcome to be a lot of dead bodies. So when we look at Boeing today, I'm not surprised that it's down. I do kind of think that maybe the uh, the uh, piling on of uh, mm, senators and ne'er-do-wells and people around the world, the one thing I don't understand is uh, we've got about 100 times more flights with those same planes in the United States. But why is it only in third world countries that they're having accidents? I brought this up a little bit yesterday. Maybe there's something in the training that's lost in translation. Is there something really different about the planes that they deliver there? It's kind of hard for me to believe that there is. Uh, but even yesterday's or Sunday's accident, I find rather troubling. That is because uh, we had some indication in the plane wreck a couple of months ago of what happened. On this one, we do too. But it suggests something drastically different. Uh, my guess is that the electronics didn't cause it to explode or burst into flames or trail smoke or make sounds that everybody said were totally different. Uh, maybe a bomb. Maybe they ran into some birds. Maybe there's a lot of things that we don't know about. They've gotten the black boxes back, and we'll know in a day or two. I don't think the buy for Boeing is today, but I do find it very interesting that they sent two of our best FBI folk to go figure it out. Yes. Scully and Mulder have been sent to Ethiopia to figure it all out because it must be an X-file. Just, you know, planes never crash. And of course, it's never the pilot's fault, never anything else. It's got to be Boeing today and everybody's piling on which I like, because that means eventually they're probably going to be a good place to buy it at the Lowe's. We'll be back in a minute. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, 
the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the Taz Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at Taz has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the Taz Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the Taz Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the Taz Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Taz Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Well, we were talking about Boeing and it uh, just crossed the wires. William Shatner says there was something out there on that wing. It was out there. I saw it. It was on the wing. Oh, wasn't that a great Twilight Zone episode? Probably the best, don't you think? That and the one that had uh, the uh, gal from uh, the Clampets, who was uh, beautiful. They all thought they needed to change her to make her look like the rest. Those are my two favorites, but you never know. Out there, on that wing, where he was really, where he overacted for the first time. And most people got to see him. I guess some people, I guess he gets away with it. Some people can't. But uh, yeah, certainly when you look at those that can overact, he is uh, on the pinnacle of it. Uh, okay, so let's go ahead and start looking at some other charts. And again, we've got a total mystery guest at the bottom of the hour. Um, we looked at Boeing. I want to look at a handful of other stocks that were testing highs and lows. Uh, Emil Pharmaceuticals, uh, bouncing along this $11 range, got into uh, a couple of previous lows with 2 million shares with 714,000 shares yesterday. Got a little bounce out here. I don't see a whole lot in it. Uh, but again, there's not a whole lot in this market with uh, lows with light volume and then highs with a light volume, but we'll see. Uh, the Cracker Barrel. Uh, you got to, this is uh, in the Cracker Barrel, kind of the, uh, what's the jam thing? Smuckers. The, the Smuckers that weren't allowed 50, within 50 miles of any large city. You always had to get there about an hour outside. You had to stop at the Smuckers when you drove across the country. Now it's the Cracker Barrel. Although I think, I think that there's a few in town. But man, are they big down here in Florida especially for the RV crowd. Uh, this has finally come back to its big gap down. <laughs> uh, it's uh, up on uh, the, what, uh, October 16th. Did come up on 670,000 shares. Uh, got into it yesterday, or today with 221,000 shares. So you may get in here a little bit more, maybe another dollar or two. Um, but actually... For a lot of the stuff out here that came down with volume, this one actually kind of setting up. 
And of course, uh, like we said, uh, big RV kind of things. So summertime crowds seems to be uh, well, some of the stuff that it does. ED, I don't know, maybe it's time to change your name or at least your symbol. I think it means a little something different than it used to growing up. Consolidated Edison, yes, ED, uh, going through its previous high. That's the December 13th high, $84.32. A little under, just a hair under 3 million shares. Today, 920,000 shares so far. Looks like it may hold that high. Got to $58.27. Um, are there better ones out there? Eh, it could be, but certainly uh, we've got this theme of a lot of stocks uh, that didn't hit the highs with light volume, came back down with a light volume. Now they're back up with a lot of light volume. And man, that just is very tough uh, to pull the trigger on because that's when they pull the chair right out from underneath you. Helena Troy, H-E-L-E which is uh, going back to its gap up of July 9th, 119.25, uh, 2.2 million shares. Again, we brought this up the other day. It looked not ripe for a little bit of a pop. You just didn't know how far it was going to get back into the gap. Uh, but certainly two days ago, 200,000 shares popped yesterday with 300,000 shares. Today going by with about 106,000 shares. My guess is that you probably get one more chance at this at 108, 109, something like that, maybe 110, but uh, probably a little bit of a pop. But actually, uh, for a lot of stuff out here, it doesn't look that bad. Now, uh, other stocks that we have at Lowe's uh, that look like they could bounce or at least are finished going down for a while is Nordstrom. Uh, this has been bouncing around that $43 level for a while. You got three days going sideways uh, since March 8th. And probably the big news is just the lack of volume. Uh, you had a big push down. That was on January 16th, uh, 2019, uh, $43.04. Uh, rejected that low and started climbing. It's been kind of consolidating out uh, in this area for a little while. But uh, what you wanted is something less than 10.6 million shares uh, two days ago, 1.9 million shares yesterday, 1.9 million shares today. Uh, a little doji out here, but just under a million shares. So risk reward, probably not a bad setup on that one. MIK. Uh, what else do we have? Michaels. Uh, we talked about this one yesterday. You want this thing to close above $12.48. And eh, you, you may be kind of close today. We'll have to see. December 24th, $12.48. 1.4 million shares. Got into it with uh, 2.5 million shares on February 11th. So you know you're going to come back and at least retest this level. Uh, you've done that. And uh, yesterday you just had 1.7 million shares, uh, which is probably a little bit too much. Not as bad as it could be. Certainly today, though, you're around that level. Um, energy did kind of dissipate on the way back down, unlike a lot of stocks. Uh, retail still kind of stinks, but maybe a consolidation for a while in the low $12 range might set this one up. Uh, if you've never been in Michael's, they're a big craft store. Uh, and uh, what do they call it? Not notebooking. I think it's something like that, something booking, where everybody puts all kinds of stuff in, and they've got little special scissors and pieces of paper, scrapbooking. That's what it's called. Um, but uh, when I've been in there to buy things like beads and other things like that, yeah, scrapbooking. Uh, that's uh, what everybody's always been in there doing. They have other stuff, too. At Christmas is normally when I go in there, buy all kinds of weird stuff for decorations. Public storage. Uh, when you've got to have a place to store your stuff because you've got too much stuff for the place that you're at, so you need even more stuff for you George Carlin fans. Gap down on August 22nd, did so with 1.55 million shares. Yesterday, you got into it with uh, a little under a million shares. Today, still holding that area, but about 600,000 shares. Energy actually was up fairly good off the February 
21st lows. Uh, and uh, that would be it. Um, I've been asked for something, so I will give it to you. Okay, Let's see what else we have. Oh, got a email, which we may have to. Uh, <laughs> and someone's emailed me something about what I've always said about Boeing, which is it's Boeing or I'm not going. He says it's it's Boeing. I'm not going. Uh, I think I think uh, uh, the uh, falsehood can go around the planet twice before the truth probably gets out the front. Anyway, we'll be back with our top secret mystery guest. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. I started trading full time in around uh, October, November, uh, October, 1998. One of the first things uh, that I did with, I think in about a year, uh, was uh, get into an absolute blender of a stock market. Uh, the, uh, you know, probably the high tide of the dot-com uh, fantasy in the markets. Uh, but we had down here in Tampa, a church that held about 800 folks. And uh, they would bring guests in uh, to speak from all over the, uh, over the world, actually. 
Uh, it was kind of interesting to see 800 people show up at a church uh, and uh, actually uh, have, you know, all those people interested in trading. Uh, many of the people that were down there were programmers that were actually trading during the day and programming at night when they got a chance trying to make money. It was uh, a bright and shining example of financial euphoria. I learned many bad lessons. One of the things I did learn that was good was bumping into Adrian Tograhi. She had a few things. Uh, one was uh, kind of a business model. We're actually uh, not looking at this as some kind of uh, part-time gig, but a full-time gig. She also had kind of a very good inventory and some video uh, and some audio tapes. I think they were audio tapes, uh, some books and other stuff, and I picked it up. I have to say that uh, the reason that I probably made it through 2001 uh, was a lot because of what she taught me, which was learned by working with other traders throughout the year. How you doing? Uh, Adrian, I'm fine. Thank you for the introduction. You know, what was even more remarkable about that meeting, it was not, you know, most people come into this looking for technique, technique, how do I get into a trade, how do I get out of a trade, and and what is the technique that I use in between? But these people came to hear the discipline aspect, the psychological aspect. To, so to have that many people show up in a church at that time to learn about this aspect of trading was remarkable to me. It was a most extraordinary meeting. I think it was, and probably the most extraordinary thing to me was, was a year later, that 800 turned to about 100 <laughs> because uh, by then the, the uh, jig was up and uh, the, a lot of the people believed that the market owed them some money uh, were, were gone and they didn't make it through. In fact, I think the average uh, of most traders that decide to do this is about 90 days and very few people make it beyond one year and then the people that make it long term are even smaller. But I guess when you look at people, you probably can tell me a lot more. Well, the fact is that people will come into this pressure, uh, profession with the, the starry-eyed that, that they're, they're going to make a small investment and they're going to make lots of money. But this, like every other uh, profession, requires a learning curve and it requires learning that uh, is very technical and very uh, time-consuming. You know, if you want to be a doctor, a lawyer, an engineer, what do you have to do? I mean, you have to spend a lot of money in getting an education. And people think that, you know, just by coming and listening to a speaker or reading, you know, uh, how to get rich quick uh, in a book, they're going to be successful in this trading where, you know, people will come to me and say, oh, I've, I've spent $10,000 on the education of trading. And I'm saying to myself, yes, and you want to make millions? The fact is that you have to put the time, the effort, and have the education necessary to make it in this profession. You know, 89% of the people that come into this profession don't make it. And why don't they make it? Because they do the wrong things. They don't uh, adhere to the basics. You know, when, when anybody is having problems in trading, I, I always go back to the basics. That's true for any profession. When I was an opera singer, you know, I had to go back to the, the runs. When I was a, a, a performer in dancing, I had to go back to the, the core of, of my being. Same thing in trading. You have to have the core. You have to have the basics. And the basics are... You have to have uh, a business plan. You have to have the, uh, the tech technical skills that you have proven to be successful. It can't be that somebody else has proven them to be successful. You have to prove that on your own. And then you have to prove to yourself that you can follow those rules. Because if you can't follow those rules, then you have to go uh, to the discipline of trading. And that's in the performance end of trading. You know, when you, when you look at any profession, uh, any performance profession like uh, golf or, or uh, being a pianist, uh, if you don't have the basics of the, the kind of psychology that allows you to perform, you're not going to be able to use the best of technique. 
One of the things that I think that I knew going in, because I'd learned to fly, uh, was, uh, or at least when I was learning to fly, uh, the first thing they asked me is, are you a doctor? Uh, because uh, at that time in the 80s, uh, doctors uh, that had their own planes were dropping like flies. And it, it, there was a kind of an organic reason for it, and that was that they all had to be back Monday morning, no matter what. And, of course, if you're flying small planes, uh, the weather determines on whether you're coming back or not. And right. so we had a lot of people. There was kind of a little bit of hubris and a lot of belief that they just had to do it and push something bad into something worse. And I, I, you kind of get that kind of uh, circular um, logic. And I've seen traders get into the point where they can only be bullish or they can only be bearish or they can only be one thing. Um, and I guess the idea is is just not getting stuck. Um, we've got about a minute to go, and then I want you to talk about uh, what you're doing tomorrow night. But uh, I, I always liked that uh, the general that was down there in New Orleans who told the reporter to not get stuck on stupid. And uh, I, I was, if you may say, say it a much gentler way, but uh, if you're stuck, Going down the wrong road. Where do you? What do you do? Well, you again. You need to go back to basics. You need to work with someone that knows what they're doing. Why reinvent the wheel? Uh, if if you're going to try to learn it from books, that's fine. But know that it's going to it's going to take a longer time. So work with someone that knows what they're doing and someone who you can relate to, and you have the resources to back that up. Because if you don't have the, the kind of finances that that trader has, you're not going to be able to do the same thing that that trader does. Uh, the and, and also very, very important is that trading is, is not uh, eight hours a day. Trading full time is two hours a day. If you push any further than two hours, you're going to work against yourself. Because now, tomorrow, it is, we're running out of time here. I just wanted to get to it. Tomorrow night you're doing a webinar. I'm doing a webinar. So in order to get the information, go to Adrian, A-D-R-I-E-N-N-E, -N -N -E, at tradingontarget.com, and I'll send you a link. It's called The Evolution of a Master Trader. I appreciate it. Anybody that didn't get that can email me at path at tfnn.com, and I'll forward it to you. Thank you very much. We're going to have you on again soon, I hope. Great. Thanks for the opportunity. You bet. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors.
Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. And we've got the uh, S&P 500 at 2795.45, and kind of about what it's been doing. Um, no real big change in the rest of everything. And of course, uh, for me, as we watch this day, it's going to be whether or not we come up with any volume. Now, on the downside, we had about eight and a half billion shares uh, when we popped yesterday. Just a little over seven billion shares. Right now, 4.2 million share, uh, 4.2 billion shares. I don't want to be Dr. Evil here. Uh, and it's just going to be light. Uh, you know, if we're right here now, we might do 6.2 billion shares. So the question is, uh, we go back, retest some lows here, maybe next week. I don't think it's going to happen now. Uh, a lot of, uh, lot of put selling yesterday, earlier in the day, pushed the market higher. Uh, but... Uh, you know, could it be next week we turn back down? Or how about another scenario? And that is that we're all waiting for the trade deal so that everybody can try to sell into the pop that that trade deal brings. Just a thought. I'm not sure which way this thing's going to play out, but we can keep a look at it. I see several things going on. Of course, we have uh, Brexit. We have a Fed that looks like it's actively getting involved in the uh, bond market again. So what is this? QE 5, 6, 8, uh, Friday the 13th, part 12. Hard to tell exactly where it is with the Fed. Certainly does look like they're getting involved in the bond market, though, uh, in the quiet on the QT, on the QE, if you follow that drift. Um, anyway, uh, we were looking at public storage. Uh, see whether or not this thing can get over this level in the next couple of days. Uh, but certainly doesn't look like it's got the volume of the previous one. Uh, was watching this one kind of interestingly today, and that would be that I'm all wet, the market's going to go back up to previous highs. And you know what? Star bulk carriers, one of the few out here, we looked at the Baltic Dry Index, it didn't see much. But certainly, star bulk carriers had one of the first bullish signs here in a while. That was the January 30th low at $6.90 with 1.8 million shares. Went below it with very light volume, about 800 and some odd, half 850,000 shares uh, over a couple of days. Now, yesterday, up on 809,000 shares. Today, just barely back into that trading range today with 281,000 shares. Again, if you're really looking for an industrial takeoff in the rest of the world, what you're looking for is some kind of low in that Baltic Dry Index uh, for grains and metals. And uh, certainly uh, the carriers and the carrier price of those uh, transport, what do they call them, the trailers that they put on the ships, containers, another thing. Uh, yeah, Thunderbird was one. Uh, Thunderbird, uh, Orange 2020, Iris Rose, uh, Night Train, and Cisco were big as a kid uh, if you were a three-buck chuck. And that's uh, all you could afford for your uh, alcohol 
imbibement uh, as a teenager and being illegal. Uh, so anyway, we've got uh, kind of a light volume back here in uh, that. Vista Outdoors, when we look at this one, certainly another one testing the very light volume of February 7th of 8.5 million shares. Or no, excuse me, $8.55, $8.55, with 1.86 million shares. Yesterday, you had 641,000 shares. Today, 341,000 shares. But again, you need to close back above $8.55. Um, and, you know, actually not a bad-looking setup, uh, but it needs to close back into those. Oh, yeah, Boone's Farm. Everybody forgot about that one, too. And I remember that. It was like strawberry or raspberry or blackberry. That's what it is, blackberry. White and strawberry, but it was blackberry that they went out there. In fact, um, one of the guys, if you ever come down to Florida, uh, there's a wonderful place to go see uh, that is full of antique airplanes, mostly from the Second World War, but also from the First World War and slightly after. It's called Fantasy of Flight. So about halfway between Tampa and Orlando. Uh, but uh, the guy bought all this land out there. And if you ever fly over it, you're going to see all the blackberry uh, uh, that he has planted all around there. But uh, I never knew anybody that actually planted uh, and, and had blackberries. Never knew where they even grew. But he, uh, he had that. Anyway, Herman, uh, not Herman Weeks, uh, Kermit Weeks of Fantasy of Flight. One of the highlights of my life was going to that place and looking at all that wonderful hardware from B-17s and 25s and uh, B-51s. And he's got a, uh, he's working on a uh, ME-109 down there and some other German planes too from the Second World War. Absolutely spectacular place of uh, hardware from the Second World War. Absolutely beautiful stuff. Okay, uh, and lastly, as we get this stuff, <laughs> well, you got to have the Mad Dog 2020 to activate the Robitussin. That's the one, what the doctor won't tell you. I'm going to tell you is that Mad Dog 2020 and the Robitussin. Yeah, yep. You may still be sick, but you just don't care. That's what it was always about. Uh, YNDX, uh, Yandex, the Russian Google kind of thing, October 17th. $35.98, 5.7 million shares. Got into that with 3.3 million shares on March 6th. It's closed back in. It really hasn't done much. Uh, again, almost all, I'm going to say 80% of the stocks are back up at these highs. They did pull back a little bit in the last week. And again, the thing that could make you extremely bearish uh, is a close under the nine day average a pop back over it, and then a close back underneath it. That's why I'm thinking that uh, if you are bearish, uh, that you could probably wait for a signal. If you are bullish, you're waiting for a pullback, so you're waiting something that uh, that this pattern doesn't develop and turn into a bearish one. But I'm thinking that, you know, I keep on waiting for kind of a pullback. We got part of it this week. The question is whether we get anything that will either allow us back in or tell us that there's far more downside. Uh, got a quick question to look at Apple. Uh, to, to, to. And what it's doing here. Uh, they just, I think, put a big bear trap in for everybody this week. Uh, and massive amounts of upgrades. I don't see anything that justifies the upgrades. Um, I've read them. I just didn't see what they saw in them. Uh, what I did see was a lot of people getting short, very short last week. I thought it would get down about 170. It did expire fairly close to that, 172.50 on Friday. And then, of course, uh, a bunch of people got short this stock. Again, I'm not a big fan of shorting Boeing or Apple or some of these other stocks um, where they have lots of money and still lots of customers. There's a lot of customers, there are a lot of companies literally going to go out of business. And uh, those are the ones that I think may be a little bit more difficult to get into, but certainly a lot more rewarding. We'll be back in a minute. 
I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And we're talking to the engineer during the break about the now evil of Disneyland. Or Disney World, actually. And, uh, yeah. Just uh, one of those things. Uh, they were something at one time. They've been giantly morphed into a... Uh, kind of like the Terminator. Can't be discussed with. All it will do is suck your money in. Uh, I'm glad I went to it when I had an opportunity. I don't think I would go again. I don't know... I guess if you have some kids, I knew, uh, or I still know, a fairly big uh, celebrity, and uh, he's got lots of money. I mean, the kind of money that you just find almost imaginable, unimaginable. Uh, and he pays three grand to get a ticket for the day where they go. To, their his kids go to the front of the line, and. His wife does it. He hates it because he thinks that they're learning a really horrible um, message out there. But, eh, what can you say? At least they get to go. Uh, IBM, got a question coming in about that one now. Uh, let's see if we've got anything else. No, that's it for the end of the day. Uh, we've talked about this. And, again, just super high short interest in this. It's creeping back up. If you wanted to short this thing, you're looking at about 140, 142. 
Um, again, these guys have made a absolute massive bet uh, that's probably not going to pay off if it does for at least another few years. Uh, and right now, just a lot of short squeezes in the market. I don't think anything's truly changed uh, for uh, IBM and their purchase of Red Hat, probably not going to really change much either. Uh, it just gives them some revenue that maybe they wouldn't have had before. But uh, that's about it. Anyway, it's been a quiet day on the Western Front as we wrap up this show. Remember to, to uh, sell when you can, not when you have to. We will be back tomorrow. I shall return. Same bat channel, same bat time.